How now, verse 12, it says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. Freely given to us. Who gives it to us? God's give it to us. Who's teaching it to us? Which things also we speak, what do we do with them? Do we supposed to speak the word? Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which what? The Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. What things? Now, I won't quit. But what things knows? What what things knows a man except the spirit to send that man? And what things knows the spirit of God but the Holy Ghost? Well, look right here. He said, right here now the comparing which the Holy Ghost teaches. That's whenever he gets linked in with the spirit of the man, ain't it? And then you can compare spiritual things with spiritual things. You've got something in there to search out your spirit that you can compare that spiritual, this in you, or that when you read the word and you've got it in you, it'll come back to remembrance. That's what he told his disciples that didn't have then. He said, this Holy Ghost I'm sending you, he'll bring all this stuff that I've said to you back to your remembrance again. It'll compare spiritual things to spiritual. Amen? But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness. Everybody say foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. They're spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things. That means that he, that don't mean he judges, passes judgment on them. That means that he, that he, uh, that he enters locks with them is what it means in the Greek, that he, that he is, uh, that he has rule to look into or to study about what it amounts to. Yet he himself is judged or or discerned of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? That word in the Greek means, that word instruct means, it would read like this, for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may unite with him? You can't unite with him if you ain't got the Spirit of God in you. You can't. But we have the what? The mind of Christ. But now now listen, 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed to rightly divide the word of truth. That's what the Holy Ghost does. Look at that last little part there, and this is a good example of it. But we have the mind of Christ. How, what, what's this talking about? The whole thing through here is talking about when the Holy Ghost interlocks with our spirit. When the Spirit of God mangles and unites with our spirit, then is when we have the mind of Christ. And what is the mind of Christ? The Word of God, ain't it? Amen? Well, I've enjoyed it, whether you guys have or not. <laughs> Thank everybody for listening. Again, I appreciate you, Kenneth and Brandon. And glad for everybody being here and listen. Let's, let's stick to the word. There's people in this world that's important, but the only important people in this world to do with God is people that's got this right here in them. The word of God is where it's all at. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Brother Herb. Good teaching. Holy Spirit. Praise God.